what's important is you can also look at the corpora cavernosa. I can look at plaque. I can look at plaques. That plaque's important because that's what causes an abnormal curvature. You actually see plaque in the muscle? Not in the muscle. So in the wall, the tunica albiginia. Ah. So think about the two tunica albiginia coming together. As they come together in that V is yep. where you see the plaque predominantly. Most of the plaque happens huh. in the V. So most curvature in the penis is dorsal, right? So it actually goes upwards, so 80%. And so these patients will have a curvature of the penis when it's erect. It's important when it gets greater than 60 degrees because that's prohibitive for intercourse, right? And it is- 60 degrees. So patients can have 90 degrees. They can have almost 180 degrees. It can be very significant. Wow. So, okay. so, when, so but that is a very- that is a very significant disease. The patients who have Peyronie's disease really suffer from depression. They, they're disfigured. They feel like there's a disfigurement. Um, there's a treatment now. Uh, 2015, the first FDA-approved treatment in the world came out for Peyronie's, which is called Zyaflex or collagenase, where I can inject collagenase into the plaque and break it down so that I can improve the curvature. So that's very important because historically, we until 2015, we had no medical treatment. Everything was off-label, you know? And what would that include? So people used to give vitamin E and they used to give um, colchicine. So in 2015, I was involved in the American Urological Association Peroni's guidelines, first guidelines. And we said, do not give vitamin E. It's not indicated. Colchicine doesn't work. But the only medication that's indicated are anti-inflammatories. The way Peroni's works this is- This is administered locally or no, systemically? Oral, or systemically. Okay. So that's what we give. Think about this. The way Peroni's disease works, there's an active phase- and there's a quiescent phase. So the day you have an injury for about 12 months, it's constantly changing. We have the rule called the 15-40-45 rule. 15% 15 of patients will get better within the first year. That's awesome. Sorry, does this mean that Peyronie's disease is always born of trauma? It's the prevailing theory. So we think that, we, and, and sex is trauma, by the way. So, and so when a patient engages in sexual activity, if he has a 100% rigid penis, less likely to injure. If he's 70, 80, or 90% rigid, he's going to penetrate and he's going to injure. So ED many times precedes PD, Peyronie's disease. Interesting. And so, and but we do think it's due to trauma during intercourse. That buckling trauma will then cause a plaque. So I tell patients, think about this. You have a balloon. I put a piece of duct tape on the balloon. I blow up the balloon. What's going to happen? Everything's going to expand except the duct tape, and you're going to curve in the direction of the duct tape. Yep. Right? And the greater the duct tape, the greater the curve. So how can I treat this? I can use medications to remove the duct tape or the plaque. And you can't incise, put it, you can't put a slit in the duct tape? You can. So that's the surgical therapy. But okay. in terms of medical therapy, you can actually put the injection called collagenase. It breaks it up and it can help straighten the penis. The second thing you can do is actually surgical. You can put stitches on the opposite side and plicate it mm. to make it straight. Or I can cut out the plaque and put a patch, a graft tutoplast or human pericardium. So we put a patch. Or if they have some erectile dysfunction with it, then I put in a penile prosthesis. Because what's the point of making the penis straight if you can't get an erection? Yeah. So we, in that case, I would put a penile prosthesis. And does a patient know, if if trauma is the predisposing factor, is it is it apparent to him that he has induced trauma? Sometimes. Majority, no. Oh, wow. So, so you can't even say... If you act quickly, you have a better chance of salvaging this. The only way is when someone has something called a penile fracture. A penile fracture is when they're engaging in sexual activity and there's a sudden pop, a sudden injury that occurs, significant swelling that occurs in the penile shaft, and you should seek immediate medical therapy, and usually it's surgical. So you'll go to the ER, they'll call me on the phone and say, doctor, could we think he has a penile fracture? We'll go in and we'll take him to surgery and we'll sew up the fracture. And so the fracture is what? A break in the tunica albiginia. So in the in the casing I was talking about. And the earlier, swelling is now because fluid blood. is leaking It's out. all blood. He's, it's a hematoma? It's a hematoma. It's, yeah. It's a hematoma. So you want wow. to act quickly. But majority of men, because we always ask them on the intake, do you remember any trauma? 90% say no. I have no idea why this is happening. Wow. I'm completely freaked out why this is happening. How did this happen to me? And then you have to say, did you know that 7 to 9% of men have this? You're not alone. This is very prevalent. Um, and it, it's very, very concerning for these men. Age? Uh, age does affect, uh, so it, it's more prevalent as men get older, but I do think, so in 2009, I wrote a, a paper looking at testosterone as a possible implicator. So we found that 74% of men 
um, had low testosterone. And that's interesting because, you know, when you have low testosterone, you have decreased rigidity of the penis. So I think you're more likely to injure. But testosterone has been implicated for wound healing, really in the dermatologic literature as well. So it's almost like a double hit. Mm -hmm. You're more likely to be less rigid and injure. You're less likely to heal. But as you get old, because many people have trauma, but they don't have a plaque. And so there has to be something going on with the healing process, right? So these patients will have an yep. injury, but then way, the way they heal is it's a plaque uh, that forms. 15% of men have this, or sorry, 7 to 9% of men have this. Um, is it painful or is it just disfiguring? Yeah. So at the beginning, I was, there, uh, there's an active phase for 12 months. And in that 12 months, it's the 15, 40, 45 rule. 15% of patients get better. We just get better. I say that don't, you know, 40% of patients stay the same. 45% of patients get worse. In the active phase, it's typically associated with pain. Every time I get an erection, I'm having pain. Mm. The patient, you say, look, I'm not going to operate on you because if I operate on you and you happen to be the 45% that get worse, I'm going to have to operate on you again because it hasn't finished, it hasn't stabilized. It hasn't remodeled. It has, it's not finished. So when I get to the quiescent phase- Which is a year. About a year, sometimes a little less, sometimes a little more, but about a year, mm. I say, have you noticed any changes that have occurred? No, doc, it's pretty stable. Is there any more pain with an erection? No, there's no more pain. Okay. Now do you want to consider a surgical option, which would be an option? The other treatment that's off-label for this that's gotten a lot of favor is traction devices. So that's been very commonly used. And these devices are devices that I are- I use one on my neck, but yeah. I'm guessing it's different. <laughs> it's, but, but it's the same, same concept. Yeah. Any part of the body is pliable. You, people wear braces because it changes. So constant traction can ch make the penis longer, wider, but straighter. How, how do you actually apply a traction device so, to the penis? So it's a there is a a portion of the device that goes around the glands and basically like clamps the glands. And then you have spring, ability to ext extend the uh, the, the uh, glands traction. is the head. For the head, folks right? Listening, yeah. And 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 the uh, base it goes at the base of the penis as well, and you can extend it uh, as far as you as comfortable. The one that I really like, but this it, is on a flaccid penis. Flaccid penis. Yep. The one that has taken gotten the most uh, interest is the one out of the Mayo Clinic called the Restorex, because the Restorex you actually bend it in the opposite direction where you're curving in the flaccid state. It actually bends, so if you're curving up you can bend it down if you're going left you bend it right yeah. and you hold it there for 30 minutes at least twice a day for three months has been shown to have about 30 to 40 percent improvement in curvature so penis larger wider and straighter but you got to do the work they're about 500 dollars, a little pricey um, but they are effective and i know somebody listening is going to think well wait a minute if you don't have peronis can you still use this device to increase length or girth so these devices actually came from the porn sites so before we started using them medically in 2010 porn sites were using them to increase length and girth and they do and actually many patients will come to by me what percent so usually about any from one to one and a half inch you can get so what yeah one inch i mean it's not like you that know, two sounds like a lot to me. Two centimeters, you know, at, at the maximum, you know, so. And is that a permanent change or is that only a change that, you know, lasts as long as you continue to use the device? So we know that patients have to, it's, uh, you, there has to be some continued therapy. So some patients, when they finish using it, will have some uh, periodic use, say every month or every, excuse me, once a week or mm. twice a week just for periodic use. But some studies will show up to two centimeters uh, you can gain in length. So it's not negligible. Yeah, but um, so we get patients to come all the time and say, can you do penis enlargement surgery? I don't do that surgery. Um, but um, I think that the stretcher is a safe way without doing surgery to gain some length. And the the guy will use this for how long? I mean, it's every day, twice a day for at least thirty minutes, up to three months. The old stretching devices were two to six, even up to six hours a day, uh, but they were not bent in the opposite direction. They were just straight, and so it was two to six hours a day every day um, for at least three months. But the Restorex, because of its ability, I think, to bend in the opposite direction, you could shorten the time that you have to wear it. 30 minutes twice a day. Wow. Um, is there a critical window in which that works, going back to Peroni's disease, where you have to do it during that 12-month period and thereafter it becomes very difficult for it to be successful? Yeah, so the people have looked at active versus quiescent phase, and I think you get benefit in both phases. Okay. In my opinion, I think it's better to catch it in the active phase while it's trying to prevent further progression of disease. So let's think about this. A guy comes in the active phase and he has 30-degree curvature. 
how do I define success? If I get that 30 down to zero, that is awesome. I'm very happy. But what if I'm able to prevent that 30 from going to 70? That's also success, right? In the yeah. active phase, right? So because if he's greater than 60, it's prohibited for intercourse. So typically I like to, uh, at least the stretching device, now the AUA guidelines, I want to be clear, will say we should probably wait until the patient is in the quiescent phase. The treatment is to give them anti-inflammatories, have them come back when they're in the quiescent phase, and then start therapy. And then the AUA guidelines, we did not put in any stretching devices as well. It wasn't mentioned. So the entire use of the stretching device is off-label? It's off-label. Got it. Uh, and it's expensive. It's 500 bucks, but you know, it's potentially worth it depending on the extent of the damage. Uh, 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 uh.